This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Farming Simulator 22 Map First Impressions video. Today, we're going to take a look at Tranquil Waters by Stevie, version 1.0.0.3. But before that, this video is brought to you by Galcomp Gamer and Chris Miller. Thank you for being Farm Barons. So the Tranquil Waters map by Stevie can be found over at Stevie's Facebook page as well as Stevie's YouTube channel. And I'm going to have both of those links down in the description below. I'd like you to go over to Stevie's Facebook and follow them over there because that is where you're going to get posts about updates to this map as well as other projects. As far as the YouTube video, you're going to have to go to that video. And then in the description will be a download link to Stevie's Google Drive. That is how they release all their mods. You're going to be able to download the map from the Google Drive there and then put it into your mod folder and you're ready to rock and roll. Let's read some of the description. Tranquil Waters has a mod desk version of 75, so it will require version 1.10.1 of the game or newer. Stevie goes on to say, my maps are not compatible with Maze Plus add-on mods. I did things my own way before the mod came out. Welcome to my latest map for Farming Simulator 22, Tranquil Waters. It is a fictional normal-sized American map featuring large central farm by the Tranquil Waters River. The farm is fully populated with custom animals, productions, and more. The farmhouse is fixed like my other maps, but the rest of the farm can be removed and customized by the player. Special AI spines are added, and in testing, we have had two or three trailer semi-load trains navigating the map flawlessly, take in a fantastic scenery of the map, offers and farm in a tranquil place. This map also features custom crops, custom fill types, textures, custom animal requirements, custom huge twin river bridges created by Luke underscore BK. Compost and anhydrous soil treatment are built in. Extra swaths, straw swaths for certain crops. Extra terrain angles, paintable fields. Most fields can be joined together. Unique boxed and shaped fields. Custom paintable textures and foliage. Animations and particles. Extra vehicles and productions all included with the map, along with custom night lighting around the map. A brewery is added in the productions under the build mode. There is more to find and many, many hours of fun on Tranquil Waters. Note that yard, the farmyard has two AI spines which join the two entrance roads into the farm. I have highlighted these with two lines of darker gravel and they run between the large sheds and cow barns so the player has a visual marker. I suggest you do not place any placeholders down along their length as it will cause issues with AI drivers. This map is precision farming ready, although it is using the generic soil map. Let's go ahead and jump on in. Now we are gonna use the mods we typically use when we took the maps. That is additional field info, additional game settings, field lease, field calculator, and precision farming. I'm going to also tell you, if you load this map up in farm manager mode or start from scratch, you will find the main farm is void of all buildings except the farmhouse, as the description said. You do start with starting machinery in all play modes. In addition, you do not own any land, and of course, you have a much larger bank balance. When we load in for the very first time, we load here right at our farmhouse and the farmhouse has a sleep trigger as well as a wardrobe trigger and then as we've already mentioned the farmhouse is permanently affixed in the map although it really is off to the side it doesn't affect the player's ability to customize the farm area because the farm area is just so large and again it's kind of off to the side over here plus now in Farm Sim, you can place multiple sleep triggers. So it really isn't that big of a deal if this house is fixed because you could put a sleep trigger anywhere else that you wanted to. Let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. You're gonna find we have the main central farm right here along the river. That is gonna be farmland ID 62. That is gonna be 
three six acres in size a big old honking farmland that can be bought for zero dollars in all other play modes edition you own farmland id one and three something else to note you can buy the river and all of the cell points and production points scattered around the map for zero dollars as well and then we also have a BGA that is located down here, and it is a part of that farmland 63. This map does include all the standard crops available to us in Farm Sim 22. In addition, we have alfalfa, carrot, onion, rye, spelt, triticale, millet, hops, and poppy. Let's go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen. The farmland lease screen shows us all of the viable farmlands, how much those farmlands cost, how large those farmlands are, and if those farmlands include any field or fields, what is included? That does look like, for the most part, the farmlands up to 20 include fields, and they are numbered the same as the farmland itself, which is always good to see. Taking a look at our field calculator screen, this is going to show us the specific sizes of each particular field, with the largest field being field 17. Oh, sorry. Field 20 is 42.95 hectares. Field 17 is 35 hectares in size we got a couple other larger ones here in 15.51 for field 16 and field 11 at 14.63 take a look at our crop counter we do have a modified crop counter so we are not using the base game crop counter here in addition we do have then growth and harvest schedules for all of our new crops in alfalfa carrot onion rye spelt triticale millet and hops and poppy Taking a look at our prices screen, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game crops. They're available to us in Farm Sim 22. In addition, we have the ability to sell all of our eggs, wool, and milk, as well as our silage, hay, straw, and grass. Taking a look down through the various base game production items, we also do indeed have the ability to sell all of the base game production items as well. So overall, you will not have any issue in basically selling anything and everything that you are expected to be able to grow. Now, with respect to lime, we do have multiple buying points and selling points for lime. We also have the ability to process our stones. And then as far as new fill types, we have alfalfa windrow. We have dry alfalfa windrow, carrot, onion, rye, spelt, dripped cow millet, hops, and poppy, which we all know about. Then we have icing sugar, brown sugar, rainbow frosting, sorghum syrup, as well as molasses syrup, red cabbage, melon, pumpkins, french fries, potato wedges, milkshake, empty pallets, ice cream, yogurt, barrels, benches, shelves, beer, wine, compost, washed potatoes, steamed potatoes, milk, oil, and hydrous ammonia now as far as the platinum expansion goes we do not have the ability to sell any of the platinum expansion products so you will need to put down your own sell point if that is something you're looking to get into and then if you are playing with pumps and hoses we do have the ability to sell our separated manure take a look at our starting fleet we do start out with a decent sized list of starting equipment it is all owned none of it is leased and it's all well maintained we do start out with multiple animal pins, although we do not have any animals at the start. This map does include contracts. We do start out with some productions here at the main starting farm. Start out with a multi-fruit silage silo that's going to take grass, chaff, alfalfa windrow, or dry alfalfa windrow, and it's going to convert that to silage and digestate. We've got a hay dryer that's going to take grass and alfalfa windrow and process that into hay or dry alfalfa windrow. We have a pig food mixer that's going to have various ways of making pig food. We've got wheat, sunflower, or not sunflowers, soybeans, and sugar beet to make pig food. Or we could go with barley, corn, and potatoes. We could go with sunflower, sorghum, and carrots. We could go with corn, sunflowers, and washed potatoes. Or we could go with corn, sunflowers, and chopped sugar beet. We do have the ability to manufacture solid and liquid fertilizer, manure and slurry for solid fertilizer, manure and digestate for solid fertilizer, or water and slurry for liquid fertilizer. We have the ability to produce wheat, or sorry, seed with wheat and liquid fertilizer, barley and liquid fertilizer, or oat and liquid fertilizer. 
We have the ability to crush our stones into lime at the main farm. And we also have the ability to create compost with straw, grass, hay, wood chips, potatoes, alfalfa windrow, or dry alfalfa windrow. We have the ability to produce mineral feed out of carrots, potatoes, and sunflowers, or pumpkins, sugar beet cut, and sunflowers. We have the ability to process our sugar beets into sugar beet cut at the main farm. We have two greenhouses at the main farm. We have tomato production, which is going to be water, compost, and manure. Lettuce production, the same mix, as well as strawberries and red cabbage. We have a milk homogenizer at the main farm. It's going to take milk in, homogenized milk out. And then we have a TMR mixer also at the main farm. That's going to have various ways of making TMR. We have our hay, straw, and silage. We have our grass, straw, and silage. We then have our alfalfa, windrow, grass, or alfalfa, windrow, straw, and silage. Then we have our dry alfalfa, windrow, straw, and silage. Woo, quite the list of things just at our starting farm. Did I mention this map has 28 productions built in? We're going to have quite the list of other productions we're going to take a look at here in a very brief moment. As far as collectibles go, we do have 100 Elm Creek collectibles available on this map. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting fleet. And boy, oh boy, do we start out with quite a starting fleet. We've got a whole fleet of John Deere tractors in the 9620RX, the 8RX410, the 8R370, and the 7R350 large tractors. We've got the Mack Pinnacle 6x4 Semi, as well as the John Deere X9 1100 Harvester that is paired up with both the HD50F Grain Header and the C16F Corn Header. We have the Nardi N6045 Header Trailer 4R Grain Header. We also have the Load King Distinction Triple Hopper Semi Trailer 4R Pinnacle Semi, as well as the TA23071 Power Push Plus Trailer. We have the Agrisim Plow Platinum Subsoiler, and this is a modded subsoiler. In fact, there is quite a list of modded implements that are included with this map. We also have a modded Limpkin Cedar. We have then the Breed Owl K105 Fertilizer and Lime Spreader. We have a modded Manure Spreader that is set up for compost. Okay, so this is a compost spreader. Be very cautious with that. We have the Liquid Multi-Tanker that is set up to accept all types of the new liquid inputs, including oil. We haven't talked about that one yet. We have the Do It 7300 Mower. We also have the Fanex 907 Tether, the Semez Z2840H Wind Rower. We've got the Shuttle 490S Forage Wagon. And then we round it out with an 1800 kilogram front weight. But wait, there's a whole lot more. As far as mods and DLCs, we do have a lot of custom items and vehicles that we can put down here. We have, of course, the Elm Creek 4X TSA multi-tanker that, again, is set up to hold all of the various new liquid fill types that are available here on the map. We also then have a set of Agrisim subsoilers. These are set up as plows. Notice that. These are plows, and uh, they are typically set up with a higher working speed. Other things are going to be set up with higher capacity and a possibly working speed. We've got an edited grape harvester. Again, has substantially larger capacity. We have an edited Ropa Panther 2 multi-fruit harvester, as well as the Tiger 6S multi-fruit harvester. It is set up to harvest sugar beet, potato, carrot, and onion. And then we have a bounty of headers for those harvesters that are set up for sugar beet, carrot, as well as onions, potatoes. We have then our compost spreader, one at six miles an or nine miles an hour and sixteen miles an hour, and again larger capacities. We've got compost spreaders here as well. Then we have modified cedars. They're going to be working at various capacities, and they are already set up to basically seed everything. So you only need one as opposed to a cedar and a planter. 
Then we have modified planters that are again also set up to seed everything. We've got the TerraSim C6F again edited to once again work at higher capacity and faster working speed. Let's go ahead and do a rundown now of all the custom production on the map. So where we left off with the TMR mixer, now we have a BGA by Stevie. That's going to take silage, chaff, manure, sugar beet, slurry, and sugar beet cut and produce energy, methane, and digestate. We have compost and wood chipping plant that's going to take grass, chaff, hay, sugar beet, potatoes, straw, and make compost. Or we can make wood chips with wood. We have a biodiesel refinery. It's going to take sunflowers and make diesel, canola and make diesel, or soybeans and create diesel. We're going to take oil as an input. We're going to make diesel and anhydrous with that. We're also then going to take herbicide and we're going to be able to take oil and water and make herbicide out of that. We have a custom bakery that's going to take flour and poppies to make flour or bread. Sorry. Then we have various cake recipes. We have our normal cake recipe. That's going to be flour, sugar, milk, eggs, butter, and strawberries to make five cakes. Or we're going to drop in a brown sugar instead of regular sugar. And we're going to drop in chocolate instead of strawberries to make chocolate cake. Although it's just cake. It's not like a different type of cake. But in essence, we're making chocolate cake here. Or we can make carrot cake. Once again with brown sugar and carrots. Or we can make rainbow frosted cake, I guess. With brown sugar and rainbow frosting. At the dairy, we have the ability to make yogurt with Milk, strawberries, and honey. We have the ability to make our butter, cheese, chocolate, as well as milkshake with milk and strawberries, and ice cream with milk, strawberries, sunflower oil, eggs, and sugar. We have the ability to process our fabric at the wool cell point by Stevie. We have the sugar mill where we're going to take sugar beets, sugar beet cut, or sugar cane and produce regular sugar. We can take then sugar cane and make a brown sugar. We can also make sugarcane molasses. We can take sorghum and make sorghum molasses syrup. We can take sugar beets and make sugar beet icing. Or we can take the sugar beet icing, butter, and milk and convert that into rainbow frosting. We have our great processing center, fairly standard there. We have our cereal factory, fairly standard there, although I'm sure it's going to work at a higher cycles per month. We have our french fry factory. We're going to bring washed potatoes and sunflower oil to make our french fries or our potato wedges. We have our grain mill for we have our wheat, barley, oats, sorghum for flour. We also have the ability to make rye flour as well as spelt flour. Our oil mill is fairly standard. We have our potato washer. It's going to take regular potatoes and make washed potatoes or steamed potatoes. We have our sawmill, which is going to take wood and make planks and wood chips or pallets and wood chips or barrels and wood chips or benches and wood chips or finally shelves and wood chips. And then we have our carpentry facility, which is going to take wood or planks and convert that into furniture and wood chips. And that, that is that is all the extensive list of the production that is built in. But the description did make mention of additional production. So let's just go ahead and kind of take a look now at our build mode. We do have some custom sheds that we can put down here. As well as other items that are tied to the map. Cell points it looks like. Under silos we have bale storage and object storage we can put down various multi-fruit silos that we can place with substantial capacities 70 million liters for this one liquid manure storage pallet collection and distribution points manure heaps and multi-fruit bunker silos or you know, silage silos manure heap extensions 
We have farm supply buy point. There are several of those scattered around the map as well. We can put those down. We have then free water and a large fuel tank. We can put down a washing area. And then we have our sleep and wardrobe triggers, as well as the farmhouse itself. Under production, we have all the platinum expansion that we would come to expect, as well as lots of custom production. We have our homogenizer. We have a larger homogenizer. Our potato washing. Our dairy. We have the multi-fruit composter. We have our cereal factory. Our oil mill. We have our sugar mill. We have our bakery. We also have our wool cell point. Great processing cell point. Carpentry. We have our silage production. Our grain, or not our grain dryer, our hay dryer. We have our pig food mixer. Fertilizer production. Small stone crusher lime production. Mineral feed production. Seed production. Manure mixer. Okay, so this is going to take straw and slurry and make manure. We have a total mixed rations mixer. We have our wood chipper. Diesel and logs to make wood chips. We have chopped sugar beet production. And then we have our Happy Days Brewery. That's going to take an interesting mix of products here. In fact, I might just plop this down somewhere just so we can see what the recipes look like. Now let's find some place to put this down because I am very, very curious what the recipes are going to look like. Went ahead and bought Farmland 22, which was a buildable plot. Let's go ahead and put down our brewery now and jump and take a look at our production. We're going to take beer. So we're going to have hops and barley to make beer. And then we got wine production with grapes and sugar. Okay, so that is what's going on over here. Let's jump back to the main farm then. Continue our look here at the build mode. We do have custom cell points also included. We have a farm barn cell points for our silage, cotton, hay, grass, silage, and sugar beet cut. We have a fast food restaurant that we can put down, as well as a manure and compost cell point that is already placed on the map. We can put that down as well. Now, this is a Mexican restaurant. It is already placed. I'm not really sure if we're supposed to be able to put that down or not, but we do have kind of a little floaty blue icon going on there. Got the custom greenhouses that we can put down. And then we've got some custom power generation as well. On our animals, we do have custom animals and animal food requirements. We have a large cow barn that we can put down. It's going to hold 500 cattle, as well as modified horses. They're going to hold various types of horses, 16 horses each, just various configurations. We've got a custom pig area, 500 pigs, and custom food requirements for those. 500 sheep in this barn, again, custom food. We have then 500 indoor chicken coop. We've got a custom honey pallet spawn point that we can put down. Decorative items, fairly standard. We do have some custom signage, some, uh, not signage, but gates we can put down here. We've got a Ringwood farmhouse that we could put down. And then we have some decorative rock also available. As far as painting textures, let's go ahead and take a look. We've got quite the list of painting textures. We have our animal mud, asphalt, asphalt alpine, cobblestone, concrete tiles, dirt, dirt. Two forest ground grass grass cliff dry grass 
gravel moss fade grassy patch gravel gravel dust gravel grass gravel light mixed gravel mixed gravel pathway then we have rock mixed rock dark rock light pathway riverbed and wet sand oh, wet mud is going to finish it out fairly standard trees and then we have the ability to put down lots of various foliages as well we have our daisies dandelion bluebell woodland fern short deco grass medium deco grass small and medium bushes mix we have field create yes that's going to be just general field we have then plowed field cultivated field is what we put down we can create a field with stubble tillage we can create a field with Potato ridges. And that is it. Let's go take a look. All these various textures. I like having the textures somewhat named well, as opposed to having a whole bunch of things called concrete and they end up being like pavers and things like that. We have our kind of different types of rock we ended with. And remember in the description, there was a mention of two dark lines that represented the AI pathway. That is right here. So these were drawn in as a way to demonstrate where those two splines are for the AI driving. And you are advised to not place buildings over top of these Otherwise, the AI may not drive as expected. We got our various gravels here. And then our paintable foliage. Paintable cultivated soil, plowed soil, stubble tillage is a new one. I, I don't think I've seen paintable stubble tillage before or paintable bridges. All right, let's get on with the tour here of the main farm. So as I mentioned and as is mentioned in the description, the farmhouse is permanently affixed here in the map. In fact, from this fence, from here back, for the most part, is permanently affixed in the map. You can't sell the water point here. And from the fence here to the left, that can be sold. The fence off in the distance to the left can be sold. The logs can be sold. Everything can be sold, basically, from here to the left and from here to to the right. We've got our custom greenhouses here, so we have our interactive trigger. We have our dump point, we have our water point. And then we have our pallet spawn point here, two rows deep. And we've got a pair of those. We also have our honey spawn point right here. And we've got custom three bee houses. We can sell the bee houses if we want to. We can also obviously sell the custom pallet spawn point. We have some nice sheds. Plenty of storage for our vehicles. You have a massive single farm going on here. 
So we have our animal delivery point for our chickens. 500 chickens in this space. We have our egg spawn point. We have our dump point for our food for those chickens. Nice. We've got some nice sheds here so we can dump our root crops in here if we want. Nice bale storage, vehicle storage, really whatever kind of storage you want to get going on here. Nice bale shed here being used for our machinery. There we have the object storage shed. So we have our dump point or our, our deposit point here. Then our spawn point for our pallets on the side here. This is an interesting way of using this. Then our interactive point there for pulling up what is in storage. Here we have our 500 pigs. Let's go ahead and check these out. After we buy all the pigs and all the animals, we're going to check out all the animal food needs. So we're dump point for our food. We have our water point for our pigs. Here we have our sugar beet chopper. So we're going to bring sugar beets and we're going to get chopped sugar beet out of there. Our interactive point around the side. We have our TMR mixer. Dump and fill point. We have our pig food mixer. We have our grass and alfalfa dryer. We have our silage fermenter. And we have our compost maker. Our massive silo is there behind that, so we were a dump and fill point here. Nice animations, nice background sounds. We have our sheep. 500 sheep. We have our food trough. going on there we have our wolf spawn point over here to the side by the animal buy I believe this is going to be a uh, fertilizer buy point we're going to have to check that out once we jump into a vehicle. We have our silage. There we've got our milk. 500 cows. Now if you do choose to Feed these manually, you have your food there. We have a manure heap. Nice covered manure heap. Here we have liquid manure storage, so slurry storage. And then this is attached with a feeding robot. So you could just bring your bulk materials in here, put them in there, and then let the feeding robot feed your cattle while you're out doing your work. We have a sell point for our bales and such. Our fuel tank. Then lots of machine storage. Here we have our wash bay. We have our repair trigger, our maintenance trigger here. Our minnow feed production. We have a second cow barn.
We have our milk homogenizer back here. So we have our mineral feed, we have our feeding robot again. Fluorate, we have our water point for both cows on the sides. Then we have some horses, 16 horses in here. Food and straw. And there you go. That is basically the main farm. Let's take a look at these animals. So we have silage or grass or alfalfa windrow, dry grass or alfalfa windrow, and mineral feed for our cows. We have sheep, we have grass or alfalfa windrow, 50% silage, 50% productivity. So our pigs, looks like we missed a pig barn here at the main farm, but at any rate, our pigs are gonna be maize and sorghum for 25%, wheat and barley, 25%, soybean, canola, sunflower, 25%, and potato, sugar beet, carrot, or potato washed is going to be 25% as well. Chickens, wheat, barley, or sorghum, 50%. Maize and soybean, 50%. And then our horses, oats, sorghum, or carrot, 60 Dry grass or dry alfalfa windrow, 40%. So don't be caught out with the custom animals. Now, everything else other than the farmhouse and other than some of the decorative items around the farmhouse can be sold. Given the fact that the farmhouse is located basically off over here in the corner, kind of tucked away, and you've got literally this massive, massive area. We're still running. We're still running. This whole area is open for you to buy, sell, replace. I don't think you're going to run into any issues with the fact that the farmhouse is permanently affixed. So we're not going to be deducting points for the farmhouse being permanently affixed. It's out of the way. We have made that exception a few times in the past where the farmhouses are really just kind of removed and out of the way. It's not going to deter you from building out whatever you want here. Plus, plus you're not going to have an issue with not being able to put down your own sleep trigger because farm sim now allows you to put down multiple sleep triggers so it doesn't matter that the sleep trigger is fixed i want to run over here real quick and i want to check this light silo out So we can buy lime, seed, salt, mineral feed, solid fertilizer. I suspect we're also going to be able to buy liquid fertilizer from here as well. Given the fact that we've got the tank of liquid fertilizer right there. And again, we have these two dark lines that are showing you the two farm entrances. And basically then it's, it's telling you where the two AI splines are, which I think is a really good idea to have this in here. So if you do want to customize a farm, keep this area clear. This is kind of the no build zone. I'm going to keep this path clear so your AI can drive through the farm without any hassle. I did mention that this map is making use of the generic soil map. So let's go ahead and see how that generic soil map is being applied to these fields. You can see all the fields have quite the variety of soil types. The two fields that we have, field one at the start is loam and silty clay. And field three is going to be sandy loam, a little bit of loam, and a little, little bit of loamy sand. Get a little bit of altitude looking over the tranquil waters river 
across the other side of the map here and just do a little quick 360. We do have some river boats making their way up and down the river, giving the map a little bit of river life. There you can see below us the full extent of the starting farm. Quite the large, quite the expansive farm. Anybody looking to farm with big time machinery, I think you're going to enjoy this map because we've got some pretty big, pretty big fields here and the ability to merge most of these fields into mega fields because they are simply separated by dirt roads as opposed to being other types of kind of objects. Let's go ahead and kind of make our way across the river. Got a restaurant cell point below. We have our bakery below. And a vast majority of the production is located on the outer edge of the map. We have a bowling alley cell point. We have our one of our fuel points that's also set up as a cell point. We have a grocery, and this is also where the Ma, Ma Familia Mexican restaurant cell point is located. We have the BGA, and here at the BGA, we can sell the BGA itself. And when we do sell that, we are basically selling everything that you see here in the screen right now. We have three large three-sided bunkers. They're going to remain. And then we have a biomass heating plant cell point. It is also going to remain. Take a look at that bridge. It's a nice bridge over not troubled waters, tranquil waters. We do have a train cell point on the map and directly in front of us is the train transfer station, transfer product to and from the train. We have here our wood chipper and compost factory. We then have our biodiesel factory. We have our vehicle shop, which we're going to come back to. Gentle rolling hills is what I would really describe kind of the way the the land is here. Shouldn't have too much trouble with respect to farming on these fields. You might need to make sure you've, you're close to the horsepower requirements and or trying to farm in a direction where you are going across the field as opposed to up and down the inclines. Got several of our productions here. We have our potato washer right there. Here we have our flour mill. We have a farm products buying station here, as well as a cell point. We have our oil mill production. So we make our way up the western edge of the map. Let's kind of rotate and look across. You see the other bridge over the tranquil waters. This is where we are going to purchase oil. So we cannot buy oil at the shop. We have to basically get it here at the oil pumping facility. And we're going to need to use the modded trailer that comes with the map in order to do so. We have our grape processing. We have our sugar factory. We have our spinnery. Our custom dairy. Farmer's market sell point. We have animal dealer here, as well as an animal dealer sell point. Love seeing animated animals at dealers. We also then have a sell point for slurry and manure and compost. Here we have our cereal factory as well as our french fry factory we have a fairly large placeable area here just north of the main farm 
as we move across the northern edge of the map. Let's take a look. We can see our main farm over there with all the silos right by the river. We have another farm products buy point. We have a grain sell point here. Here we have a dealer trigger as well as a fuel point and then a sell point for fuel. We're coming up to where we placed the brewery. But before we get to there, we have a sell point and an AI farm. This would typically be an open buildable area. But we went ahead and bought that, and that's where we placed our brewery. Then down here in the southeast corner, we're going to have our sawmill as well as our carpentry. Kind of tucked away in the, in the forested area. So they are right there. And then we're going to make our way back over to our vehicle dealer. We're then going to grab our Mahindra and then do a drive around. But yeah, I think a lot of people would be really happy playing on this map. Somebody that likes to play with large machinery, someone that wants to dabble with custom production. With the modified vehicles, the modified implements. Right, you can work kind of with the uh, extra capacity, high working speed, the fast farming stuff, if you're into that. And then again, like you can merge these fields extremely, extremely easily. Down here at Stevie's Vehicle Emporium, we have our dealer trigger here at the side, well marked. It's good to see that. We have a fuel point also here on the side, well marked. And inside, we have our vehicle dealer. Let's go ahead and order up a Mahindra, see where vehicles spawn in at. Of course, we have our collectibles, can't forget those. All right, I think we also have a couple here at the uh, sales counter in the show room. Now, when I was painting the textures at the main farm, I was getting a message about a spawn point. I'm thinking the reset point is at the main farm. So if you reset vehicles, I think they're going to reset back to the main farm as opposed to here at the shop. But boy, we have a massive area here for your vehicles to spawn in at. There's no gate or anything. So very easy, very easy to get out of the shop. And we have very wide roads, very wide roads. So no problems whatsoever in getting out of here and getting back to the main farm, in my opinion, with big, large or long machinery. Make our way out of the shop and uh, Gonna circle around a little bit here at the town. Lots of hot spots here in town. Lots going on. So here we have our Southern Rail Grain Pool. This is going to be our grain silo down at the train tracks. We're going to be able to transfer product to and from the train. We also have a farm products buy point down here. We're going to find this scattered around the place. We've got lime seed, road salt, mineral feed solid fertilizer we also have the ability to buy our liquids here as well we have a rent train we have our train dump and a fill trigger and then we had our trailer dump and fill here on the other side And then we have a cell point here, Pallet Co. Uh, 
is going to be the Palico Palette Stealth Point. Here we have our compost and wood chipping facility. We have two entryways here for our dump. They are thankfully both labeled. So we see chipping and composting. So depending on what you want to do, you're going to take your logs to the chipping area. You've got your wood cell trigger there then. Then we also have our composting. So anything we want to compost, we're going to bring there. We have our interactive icon. And then we have our build trigger for our wood chips or compost. Continuing down the road, we have our biogas plant. Not an auto gate, obviously. We have three large three-sided silage bunkers over here to our left. Those are permanent. We cannot get rid of those. Then we have multiple ways of putting silage or product into our BGA. We have two dump points here, or we could put them in the digesters. We have our fill point for our digestate. Then we have our interactive icon right there. And then over here, we have our biomass cell point. This is where we bring wood chips and or logs and sell those. We can sell the BGA, as I mentioned, in the drive around. And if you do that, then you can put down your own biogas plant or heck, you can make use of this however you want. Because you know what? This is the wrong way to play. Let's start talking about our scoring here. We've already mentioned, we're giving the map a full point with respect to the farm being customizable. Yes, the main the main farmhouse is fixed, but we have made exceptions in the past where when the farmhouse is fixed, but off to the side and really not a big deterrent in the player's ability to customize the area, we're just gonna let it pass. And that's what we're gonna do here on this map as well. We have 28 custom Productions built into the map. We have BGA, we have a compost and wood chipper, biodiesel, silage production. We have a hay and alfalfa dryer. We have pig food production, fertilizer, seed, lime production. We have a composter, mineral feed, sugar beet chopper, two large custom greenhouses, milk homogenizer. We have a bakery, dairy, spinnery, sugar mill, grape processing, a cereal mill, French fry factory, an oil mill, grain mill, sawmill carpentry and TMR mixer and then we add the placeable brewery to that mix as well so yes we do have production or areas set aside for such so a full point there as well Here we have our grocery dump points we have the Mexican restaurant dump point right here off to the side in this shopping center complex there's my familia. We have our fuel. Fuel islands. We have a cell point here at our fuel point for our biodiesel, amongst other things. And then we have our bowling alley cell point. Located around the back. Let's double back a little bit because we've got our biodiesel to take a look at. With respect to being able to sell all our basing crops, production items, and animal outputs, the map once again gets a full point there as well. Because we do indeed have the ability to do all of that.
Remember, these gates are not auto gates. <laughs> Here we have our dump point for our inputs to the biodiesel plant. There we have our fill point for our biodiesel right here. And then we have our interactive icon at the door. Let's make our way up the up the river. Past a church. That's a really nice bridge. See what was that? Uh Luke underscore BK. If you're watching this video, you made a nice bridge. Thank you. Overall, I think the map is going to play fairly well for most PC configurations. There is a lot of activity going on in a few kind of select areas, but overall, where you're out in the fields, you're going to be fairly well removed. You may have some frame issues in the farm because of just the amount of things being rendered right there. You may have some issues down in town again because of the things being rendered, but overall, frames should be pretty peppy I haven't really noticed any much uh, hitching or slowing down with my system here we have our bakery so we have our interactive icon pallet spawn point around the front and a dump point around the back nice water wheel here also at the mill bakery the flour mill is somewhere else here we have Mama Joe's diner set up we have our dump point nice little kid playground area a little seating area man this makes you want to come to mama joe's for an evening out now yeah, let's make our way over here to the western side Really interesting field layouts here. So, just a little background on Stevie. If you are new to the game, you're not familiar with Stevie's work. Stevie has been around for at least Farm Sim 15. Maybe, maybe even further back than that. I came out in Farm Sim 17, and the people that had played Farm Sim before me were raving raving the raves of stevie in 17 so clearly stevie's been around since at least at least 15. very well liked amongst several pc players as far as the maps go was always heavy in production before production was a standard thing so what do we got going on here Here we have the grain mill, potato cleaning. So we have our fill point over there for our grain mill byproduct. We have our dump point, we have our pallet spawn point, and our interactive point to the side. We have our potato washing directly right here. Stevie has multiple maps out right now for FS22. I think we've covered probably two of those maps already in the channel. I think this might be the third map. Uh, there may be more that we just have not covered. Um, I'm not 100% up to speed. Stevie also has lots of modded vehicles and implements as well. Again, they're going to have higher working speed, higher capacities. Color change is typically something that is also put on those. So here we have our potato washer. We have our pallets for our washed and steamed potatoes. Interactive icon in our potato dump point. Nice animations going on here. With the uh, rotating potatoes under the water plane. 
potatoes going up the conveyor belt. And then we have our fill point there for our loose products. Now, one word of warning with respect to Stevie's maps is that often they are updated and they are updated with frequency. In fact, we're two weeks out. We've got version three. I think we're fairly stable with respect to this map for a little bit. So you should be good to go. But do note, there is the risk of when a CD map drops right away that there is going to be a fair number of updates early on, which can be expected. It's hard to catch every single thing in testing. We have our oil mill, so we have our interactive icon. We have our pallet dump point. We have our spawn point and our dump points there for our liquids and such. Looks like we had the ability to draw bulk liquid out, bulk oil out. I do know that the modded tanker is set up to hold those liquids, those oils. Coming through, coming through, passing on the right. So here we have where you are going to be buying your oil. And the oil is going to be used over at the biodiesel plant for production of diesel and anhydrous or herbicide. We have our grape processing. So we have our interactive icon. We have our pallet spawn point. We have our dump point here on the side. We have a bulk fill point. Sugar mill. So we have a bulk fill point. We have our pallet spawn point. We have our interactive point and we have our dump station. We have our spinnery. So we have our dump and our interactive point in the front. Our pallets are gonna spawn here around the back. Right there. This will be a decent multiplayer map for a kind of a community-based and group-based map where you play on a single farm. Lots of production going on, like lots to do. So we have our dump point, our interactive point, our pallet spawn point for our dairy. Farmer's market sell point. We can buy a farming product, so our lime, fertilizer, seed, herbicide, all of that there. We have our dump points for our farmer's market. We have our animal dealer in all the various sundry of cell points associated with the animal dealer. So we have the cell point here. We have our animal dealer dealer trigger. We have the ability to sell manure, compost, and slurry over here to the side. And then we have a cereal factory. Pallet spawn point on the right, dump point on the left, interactive icon around the corner. We have our French Fry factory, interactive icon, pallet spawn point, dump point there. We also have a cell point here. Now there are two icons here. I believe that we have a cell point here and I think one of those floaty icons technically should be over here for the bale cell point. All right. 
strategy to hop on this bridge and make our way over the rudder. With respect to buildings where appropriate are using the new texture technique as well as round textures and such using the new texture technique. I give the map a full point there as well. I took a look at the main the main vehicle dealer. That's the one that is a little a little uncertain, but really that's really the, the only building that has any question for me there. And it looked like the siding was reflective of the new texturing method. Very big, very big pallet, not pallet, but a very big placeable area here to put down a northern farm, put down lots of other production, plow it up, and uh, paint down your own field there if you want. Over here we have another farm products buy point as well as a grain sell point. So the farm products is there. On our right, grain sell point is right here. I'd say if you're new to the game and you really haven't dived into mod maps as of late. This type of map could be an easy maybe entry into mod maps. There's a lot going on. Uh, but you can all start it kind of at your own pace. But it's still a fairly easy play with respect to the field layouts and getting around. So here we have another dealer trigger. We have a fuel point here as well as then a fuel cell point right there for biodiesel but there are definitely good maps for new players to get into mod maps and then there are definitely maps that a new player should probably avoid initially and I think this is one that definitely should be on the on the give it a try list. We've got a grain product sell point here. Now remember this was a blank buildable area where we did put down the brewery. And if you do place the brewery, then you got your dump point, your interactive point here at the front spawn point for your beer and wine on the side we got one more item to take a look at that is the sawmill and carpentry facility and then with respect to player and interactive areas being clearly marked overall all of the areas are very very clearly marked we've got our corner markers we've got our floaty blue icon markers We've got the one spot where maybe, maybe the floaty blue icon isn't right. But then again, we just saw the the grain cell point in the extreme north east, where we had two floaty two floaty dump points over the grain. So maybe, maybe that is how that's to be intended. So we're gonna go ahead and. Go with benefit of the doubt here and once again give this map a score of five out of five with respect to our game playability score that covers how well any one particular map for farm sim 22 plays to the farm sim 22 features and functions okay score has zero to do with my personal interests the map. I think the map's nice. I like the map. Doesn't mean I love it. Doesn't mean I hate it. It's a bad score. Just means it plays well for the FS22 gameplay. So we have our sawmill here. We have our wood cell point. We have our dump point. 
we have our spawn point for our pallets and such. Favorite interactive icon. Favorite wood chip point. Over here, we have our dump point. We have our wood cell trigger. We have our pallet spawn point for our carpentry. And our interactive trigger here as well. And then over here, we just have a general wood cell trigger. If you just want to get rid of wood and you don't want to put it in your productions, well, you can just put it right here. Wood cell and off you go. So guys, I'd love to know what you all think down in the comments below of Tranquil Waters. Have you been on this map? It's been out for about two weeks now. I was just recently made aware of this map the last few days. Took a look at it and decided, yeah, this is definitely worth giving a look at and uh, putting the video up in the channel. Hope you guys have enjoyed the video. And if you did, please go ahead and hit that like button. Hit subscribe. Tick that notification bell. That way you can be sure to get notified on future map upload videos as well as live streams. But I agree. I agree with the name's title. I think this map is uh, tranquil. Perfect for getting your your farm chill on, if you will. And until next time, happy farming.